Welcome to Work This Way, a labor and employment podcast. I'm Tina Emerson, here today with Christy Rogers and Jenny Cluberius, both Maynard Nexon labor and employment attorneys. Good to see you both today. Hey, Tina. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, well, today, Jenny is going to be talking to us about trade secrets for our first episode of a two-part series on the laws that protect most confidential information from misappropriation. Jenny, can you start us off by telling us if you're seeing misappropriation of trade secrets on the rise, and if so, why do you think that's the case? That's a great question, Tina. So yes, we are in fact seeing a rise in misappropriation of trade secrets. In large part, I believe that is because with COVID, we saw many employees start to work remotely. Employees are now working everywhere. They don't have to necessarily be in the workplace. They could have an employer in one state and the employee is working 10 states away. So with the rise in COVID, the rise in remote work, we have seen a lot of electronic equipment going out the door, um, laptops. We've seen employees using things like external hard drives to store their work-related information. And of course, thumb drives. We've seen a um, rise in the use of say cloud accounts and things like that that workplaces are using for, and employees are using in workplaces many times for legitimate purposes while they are working with their employer. But then at the time the employee separates from employment, obviously the employee having access to these cloud accounts, these this electronic equipment like laptops, external hard drives, those types of things can become problematic because the employee whose employment has now terminated is in possession of sometimes the keys to the kingdom for the employer. A bunch of their confidential and trade secret information is out there. And a lot of times employees are not thinking about the fact that when their employment ends, they are retaining items that really do need to be returned to their employer. So yes, we are definitely seeing uh, a trend of increased trade secret issues um, retention of confidential information post-employment, those types of claims. And so, Jenny, I know that we both probably deal with this a lot, that you know, we deal with a lot of employers who don't really understand how important it is to protect their confidential information kind of from the outset. So talk to us a little bit about why that's so important, why employers need to take steps now before that misappropriation has occurred. Sure. So one of the things that an employer is going to have to establish in any trade secrets case is that they took reasonable measures to protect their trade secret information. And that doesn't mean the employer has to take all measures, all possible measures to protect their trade secret information. It just has to be reasonable measures. You cannot, as an employer, once a misappropriation has occurred or you're trying to lodge a claim for misappropriation, go back in time and recreate those reasonable measures. So things like getting agreements from your employees on the front end about what constitutes confidential information, their agreement to return it upon separation from employment, their agreement not to retain it, their agreement to return it even on demand if the employer requests it back. Um, you can't get that necessarily from an employee after the fact. Sometimes we can do some cleanup in a severance agreement if you're going to offer that to someone. But many times employers won't have the opportunity later to inform employees what the confidential information is that needs to be protected um, and educate them on their obligations about giving it back um, at the end of their employment. <clears throat> Things like handbook policies, again, communicating to employees, what do you consider confidential and trade secret information? That's really key. Oftentimes we're getting those handbook disclaimers signed and giving people the handbook to review at the beginning of employment. Can't go back and, and recreate that. Um, even steps that you're gonna take for the employee or with the employee throughout employment um, for example, when they log into their computer, are you using some kind of dual authentication methods? Um, are you uh, telling employees what is and is not appropriate use with respect to your information during working time? Are you informing them what they can and can't do by way of dissemination of the information to third parties? Um, 
are you getting non-disclosure agreements from your vendors who to whom your employees might be um, conveying this information for legitimate work purposes? These mm -hmm. are all things that you have to do real time. We can't go back as lawyers and try to redo or recreate those things for our clients. So taking a proactive approach to protection of your trade secrets is really going to um, be critical in the event you have someone who you determine has, has misappropriated that information. And often when our firm hears about a trade secrets case, it is after the fact. It is after something terrible has happened and they need to start doing discovery and looking into it. What advice do you have for an employer as they start assessing if they're taking the appropriate measures to avoid something like that happening? Sure. Well, first piece of advice would be to contact um, Maynard Nexon, your, your <laughs> lawyers here, or of course, your employment counsel, and have them walk you through uh, the things that have become problematic in past cases. You know, where have they seen weaknesses? Um, what things are important to juries that you may not even really consider something to be super important, um, but a jury might consider that. I know we've had trade secrets cases in the past where we've done uh, focus groups, we've had mock trials, and the things that jurors fixate on in trade secret cases with respect to reasonable measures is very interesting. For example, um, one kind of favorite thing for employees to do, it seems, is to email an employer's confidential information to themselves at a personal email address. And um, oftentimes, juries will be very interested in what the employer communicated to the employee about their ability to do that. Was there a non-disclosure agreement in place? Um, how strong was the non-disclosure agreement? That type of thing. Um, so uh, definitely lots of ways to be proactive, as I've already mentioned, about protecting your information. Um, and you should take steps to do that early and often. Your employment counsel can walk you through um, those issues. And I've already mentioned the handbooks. I've mentioned the agreements with your employees. I've mentioned some of the um, other more technological things you can do. Not too many of them because I'm not exactly tech savvy myself, but there are numerous things that employers can do um, from a tech standpoint, including, for example, restricting access on a need-to-know basis with respect to some of the information to a limited group of people. Um, that's something that's a reasonable measure that people don't really think about. And then, of course, when you have employees who are departing from employment, are you sending them reminders, whether whether they're written, verbal, are you telling your employees, hey, remember you signed this agreement, you've got to give anything that belongs to us that is considered confidential or trade secret back to us or disclose to us that you have it on a laptop, on a, in a, in a, stored in the cloud somewhere, in personal emails, on an external hard drive so that we can work together to make sure that we get that information off of those devices or off of those storage mediums and destroyed. So lots of things employers can be doing um, to be proactive uh, when they receive good advice from employment counsel. So when we get to a point, you know, where we've determined misappropriation has potentially occurred, obviously a large part of the issue in the case, you know, for an employer to maybe to be able to prove that their information has been taken is preservation of the data and the documents. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, what are some of the issues that you're seeing frequently in terms of this data and document preservation? So a large part of any trade secrets case is going to turn on forensics and what you can prove someone did on a given electronic device or on a given um, account at any time. Many uh, folks sometimes fall into the trap of putting electronic equipment back in use really quickly without taking a peek and seeing, hey, what was this person doing right before they left our employment? If you know that an employee who has resigned is going to go to a competitor, you probably would be well served to just check out what their activity was um, before they left. And even if you find out an employee is going to a competitor and you're going to let them work out a notice period, maybe alert someone in your IT department, you know, to kind of be um, 
be watching, be monitoring for whether people are plugging external devices into their computer, you know, unusual internet activity or activity on the server. So um, I would say from the standpoint of an employer who's concerned about trade secrets going out the door, doing a little bit of investigating before you uh, put, before you wipe a machine, wipe a computer and put it back into use is important. That said, don't do too much investigating because we want the integrity of the data to remain, uh, to, to keep its integrity. Um, like I said, the forensics play a key role in these cases. And oftentimes, if there's a situation where an employee has used, uh, say, a company-issued laptop to as a tool in, their, in furtherance of their misappropriation of trade secrets, we want to get that laptop to a forensic analyst to image it, create a true forensic image of the machine quickly, and then generate um, these very detailed reports for us that will give us a lot more insight into what it was the employee was actually doing. We can locate Google searches uh, that the employees were, were inputting, which is often very telling in these cases. We can tell whether they've been uh, plugging external devices into and out of the machine, whether they've been accessing cloud accounts. We can tell lots and lots from the forensics on a machine. And oftentimes in these cases where employers believe that trade secrets have been misappropriated and they contact us, it starts with a hunch. They feel like something is amiss with the employee when they're on their way out the door. And then they take a look, a brief look, as we've described, and they realize, oh my goodness, this person has been emailing massive amounts of our confidential information to themselves, um, which they shouldn't have been doing, or they... Um, you know, appear to have been accessing unauthorized cloud-based accounts at the same time they're accessing, you know, some of these companies' highly confidential documents. So I would say contacting your lawyer early and getting a forensic consultant is involved, involved is very, very important. Um, and then, of course, if you're on the as, as sometimes happens with our clients, because we represent companies, a lot of times we will have a company who is on the receiving end of a letter um, stating, hey, you know, you may have hired someone who's, who's misappropriated our trade secrets. I cannot emphasize how important it is, especially if you want to try to get that matter resolved outside of full-blown litigation for the company who, um, you know, has the employee there at the time to try to isolate and contain um, the information that may have come over with the, the new employee. Uh, we see a lot of uh, spoliation of evidence issues in these cases if employers do not take the correct steps to isolate and preserve you know, the machines or the accounts that the employee has been transferring the information to. And once the new employers a uh, server or laptop has been contaminated with the confidential information and trade secrets of, of another company, that company is probably going to get named in litigation as well. So you talked a little bit about the spoliation issues, and you also mentioned sort of giving these departing employees instructions about, hey, don't take our information. Um, you know, you, you shouldn't be copying your devices. One of the things that I'm seeing more frequently that I'd love to get your thoughts on are situations where a company says to us, hey, we have these employees who've left. We're concerned about the fact that we think they may have taken confidential information. And when we get the devices, what we find out and what we realize is that these companies these employees wiped them clean before they sent them back to the to the company, right? So they may have had a company laptop, they may have had a company issued iPhone, all the data that we thought we were going to have, we don't have because that's now been wiped by the employees. So do you think it's good for us to be telling employers, hey, not only remind people that they can't take your stuff, but should we be giving employees in explicit instructions that they are not to wipe or delete any materials off of their electronic devices before they turn it into us? Yes, I think it's wise for employers to do that. And we typically when we're helping employers craft letters with instructions like that for their departing employees, we will ask that the employee work with the employer. You know, if they've got something on their machines 
or even if it's not on their company laptop, on some other external device or on their phone or, or what have you, that they voluntarily disclose that to us so we can work with them in a you know harmonious manner to try to ensure that all of the company's information is gone and there can be peace between the employee and their employer moving forward. But I have seen that exactly what you're describing happen. And um, oftentimes it can come back to bite the employee in the litigation that's probably in a, inevitably going to ensue because many times, even when employees think they've completely wiped a device, they really haven't. And there are things that the employer can recover, whether it's from their server or from doing some kind of forensic hoodoo voodoo on the machines that is <laughs> way above my pay grade. But we have some great consultants who have helped us recover items off of the machine that help us piece a little bit of the story together. And Christy, as you and I know, uh, the employee, if they're even, you know, potentially unnoticed for litigation, um, they can be accused of spoliation of evidence and there can be adverse inferences entered against them and, and all that type of thing. And even aside from a court entering an adverse inference, if you have an employee who has wiped clean their equipment before they've returned it, it looks very suspicious to a jury. You, you almost look guilty even before you've done anything or before the employer has had to prove anything. But I think your point is a really good one that employers should consider um, not just telling employees, hey, return this stuff and make sure everything's deleted from it or from your devices or what have you. Let's have a conversation about what you have and let us help you get the information off so there are no issues moving forward. So we talked a lot about employees that are currently at the company and employees that have been separated from the company. What about when you're onboarding new employees and you want to create this culture of discretion at your company? What is it that they need to do when you're bringing an employee on to let them know, you know, this is the way we do things and this is how you protect yourself as an employee and how you can protect your new employer? So oftentimes we will advise our clients in their agreement where they're talking about what their confidential information is the non-disclosure agreement that they have folks sign at the beginning of their employment with their company. Coupled with that is some language that's very important that uh, basically the, the employee affirms that he or she is not bringing any information with them belonging to any other company that they're going to use in connection with their employment with a new employer. Uh, the new employer should clearly convey to that employee in that document and also in training, I think onboarding, that the company doesn't need or want any confidential or proprietary information belonging to any, any other entity, including competitors. The company will not tolerate an employee's doing so. That's against company policy and it would be a violation of their non-disclosure agreement as well. And that if the company later discovers that the employee has violated that, agreement or that policy, that could be grounds for discipline up to and including termination. These claims are very, very serious claims, trade secrets claims. And when they're brought and they're brought successfully, they can result in very large verdicts, which include, if you can establish willfulness, um, enhanced or liquidated damages. And there's also attorney's fees that courts can award. So the, the new employer protecting itself from onboarding employees, bringing confidential information, many times can be equally as important as them protecting their own confidential information from disclosure by their employees. Because as I said earlier, they're very likely to find themselves in a lawsuit, especially if you've got a situation with competitors, but even if the information just happens to make its way onto their server. Um, you don't have to necessarily establish use of a trade secret in a trade secrets case to have damages. The very fact that a trade secret is divulged and is no longer a secret, um, the, the way courts view that and the way the legal analysis goes is there are inherent damages associated with the trade secret losing its secretness, so to speak. So a great question and like I said, equally as important issue for employers to be dealing with when they are onboarding employees to ensure that there's no cross-contamination of confidential information from competitors or other third parties 
um, from those incoming employees. So we've obviously talked a lot about, you know, onboarding employees and making sure that we're having them sign the right agreements and sign the right kinds of documents to, to protect the company. You know, I think one of the places that I tend to see where there's maybe a gap is that we kind of do a lot on the front end and we do a lot at the very end, but we're a little squishy in the middle. Um, so what are your thoughts about, um, you know, employers who say, okay, we, we want to make sure that during the course of employment, we're doing everything that we can to make sure our employees understand what they should and shouldn't be doing. You know, and maybe it's not even employees acting maliciously, but they're sharing information during the course of their employment and not realizing that they shouldn't. Do you think, is this a situation where employers should consider doing some kind of annual training or semi-annual training with employees on here's how we handle confidential information, Here what your, here's what your obligations are, you know, as an employee, um, you know. Absolutely. I think that annual training at the very least is essential um, on what you consider confidential information, how it is to be treated, um, how it is not to be treated, what the acceptable uses and disclosures are of that information, um, how to recognize confidential information in the workplace. Are you stamping things confidential and proprietary so that your employees have a, a you know, kind of reminder if they're looking at a document, oh my gosh, this is one of the things that, that falls under the purview of that policy. Of course, you don't have to, to stamp everything that way, but if there are certain things that are very highly confidential that you don't want to get out, it definitely can't hurt to, to do that type of thing. But communicating to your employees what your expectations are of them with respect to this information, both at the outset of employment, regularly throughout the course of employment, and again upon their separation from employment, is, is just imperative, Christy. And you're right. It is a continuing education that needs to be happening of employees. And what you consider confidential and proprietary is going to change over time as well. Um, so helping employees understand their obligations helping them understand what you do consider confidential and proprietary is all going to help further that goal of protecting your information. And, and again, the training is a, another reasonable measure that you can point to after the fact if an employee doesn't comply with their obligations and walks out the door with your formula for Coke or something else that's just incredibly important to your company. So communication is key before, during, and after employment uh, so that the employee understands how to protect themselves and protect the company. So thank you very much for that insight. We will see you all next time for part two of this two-part series on trade secrets with Jenny Cluverius and Christy Rogers. We'll see you next time on Work This Way. Mm -hmm.